Today we're going to go over some engine management options for your budget LS swap. We'll also cover what I did and why. Welcome to Budget Outlaws. Let's get started. All right, let's get to it. I'll break it down into a couple sections. And the first will be little or no cost. And this is more for the stockish engine swaps. You just go and buy a truck engine out of the junkyard and you want to get it so that it'll start because the vehicle anti-theft device would keep it from running. The first thing we need to do is delete the VATs and whatever else is keeping it from running and use the stock wiring. You can delete some of the connectors if you want to going on the websites. Now this is only for Gen 3 LS P01 and P59 computers. You get an Android app called LS Droid, an OBD2 connector module called OBD Link MX or LX, and only these will work with this application. Tuner Pro Freeware Tuning Program. And then you'll need to make a bench wiring harness. Here's a drawing of mine and then a picture of it. They're pretty simple. And there are quite a few videos out there that tell you how to do all of this. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to read the binary file off the computer. You're going to pull it into uh, Tuner Pro. You're going to delete the VAT section. There's just changing a couple of numbers. And you'll have to check on the websites to see what your particular setup needs to have deleted or changed in order for it to run. After you've deleted that, you save it to the file, you put it on your phone, and you write it back to the computer. So you read the bin off of your 5.3 ECU, you delete the VATs, and then you can write it back to this uh, whatever it is. It's, it could be a 4.3 V6 VAN ECU, as long as it's a 0411. And guess what? Now it thinks it's a 5.3 truck ECU. So uh, just a recommendation that you write it out to the uh, junkyard um, ECMs so you don't mess up the original. Um, and it can happen. It's the, the whole look up the word brick uh, and ECU, and you'll get you know, probably get scared about doing any of it. Oh, one more ultra cheap option for the stockish motor swap. You can pay someone about a hundred dollars to do all this for you, and some of them for like a hundred twenty-five will send you a computer ready to go. It just the vats are deleted and plug it in, and it starts. All right, the next one is going to run between $400 and $800. And for the built engines, you've changed the cam, you've got headers, you've got a different intake, you've got a ported throttle body, whatever it is. Um, you need to do some tuning. And you could do that with Tuner Pro. I really like the uh, scanning ability with, with HP tuners, and this is what we're talking about here, is, is buying HP tuners. The basic hardware and software is $299, $300 and then you buy a license for whatever your computer is and for these are they're about fifty dollars a credit and it takes two credits four hundred dollars gets you a good uh, a tuning software and hardware so you may have to buy some additional things like a map sensor um, you definitely want to get the wideband and maybe some other bits but it's it's you know it takes a bit of a learning curve but it's doable it's all online with some great free tutorials. Goat Rope Garage is on uh, YouTube, and it's one of the best guys out there. Kyle is very knowledgeable about every aspect of tuning. Quick way to find him is to go to tuning101.com, and it'll take you to his home page for his YouTube. And there's just a ton of good uh, learning videos out there. There's others as well, uh, Low Buck LS, Dirt Floor Fab, and a more. You know, this all seems daunting at first, but after you've spent some time and you've learned some of it, you realize it's, you don't have to learn everything to get this job done. And on Thursday night, Kyle does a Goat Rope Garage online chat, and somewhere between 70 and 100 people, and he'll answer questions about whatever you're working on. And Kyle does a pretty good job of getting to most of the questions, and, and he does giveaways too, why not? Uh, one more thing on HP Tuner. Since we're using a stock ECU, the transmission control can be done with a stock GM computer. If you swap transmissions, like going to a 4L80, 
you can usually find a copy of the code from another tune and just copy it over. Now there are other tuning software out there, but they're usually more expensive or less capable than the one that I mentioned here. So please comment below if you found something that, that works for you. So there's a ton of high-end fuel injection kits out there. Most are really easy to set up and use, and many of them are even self-learning, which basically means it tunes itself once you fill in some of the blanks. So I'm going to stick with the one that I would consider, and that is the Holly Terminator X. And I'm pretty sure it's a price leader right now. It's about $9.50 for a basic system. For a drive-by cable, non-electronic controlled transmission, in other words, manual or a turbo 350, 400, power glide, or even a $700. This would work great for uh, our 914 since it's manual and it's a drive-by throttle cable, not electrical wire. That would be a plug and play. It comes with all of the cabling, computers. It would be as simple as it gets for me to switch over to that. Now, if you move into a computer controlled transmission like a 4L60, 4L80, or, or the like, the price jumps up about $500, and this one's called the Terminator Max. The great thing about both of these systems is that they can control boost, nitrous, bigger injectors, E85, pretty much anything you can throw at it. They also have a Holly Sniper that will replace the carb system and give you a, a nice classic look. And there are a lot of good videos on Holly fuel injection installs. And here's one that I like is a Flying Sparks Garage. They just put a sniper set on their small block Ford Bronco. And it's hard to contain Emily's excitement when it fires up. And, and I know the feeling. So what did I do? Let's take a look at my setup real quick. When we bought the LS914 with its wrecked front end, it was a running and driving car. It just looked a bit sketchy. And one of the first things I did after fixing the body was to install an AEM wideband. This told me that the tune was close, but it was a bit on the lean side. So I decided to do the low buck option that we just talked about and see if I could turn up the rev limit and add some more fuel. Well, I purchased a couple of extra PO1 LS computers, and I decided to give ECU hacking a try. I had already had the OBD Link MX scan tools, so it was now just a matter of making a bench cable and getting the free apps, free software. The number of steps are quite involved, but I'll put a link to a document on our budgetoutlaws.com website. We'll give you a step-by-step. -step. Unfortunately, the original video that I used for this is gone, but there are other videos up there, and we'll put a link down below. So I read the computer that came with the car and immediately ran into issues of a tuner lock. Now there's a ways around it by grounding a pin inside the ECM, but it's a daunting task if you get the wrong pin. Anyways, I was able to read it, but still unable to pull it into Tuner Pro. HP Tuners has just a slightly different, it was running into problems. I suspected that there were a lot of tweaks to this ECU in order to get it to work with the electronics of my 45-year-old Porsche. I decided to bite the bullet and see if I could get HP tuners to get into the ECU. Again, I was shot down. HP tuners wouldn't read it without the password. But now I had HP tuners and a couple of spare ECUs, so I made the leap and started to create a tune for the one of the junkyard ECUs. Here's where I made my biggest mistake. I found the tune on HP Tuner's repository that closely matched my setup. It was a LS657, big heads, biggish cam, headers, uh, LS6 intake, 42 pound injectors, and so on. The best of all is it was a speed density tune that didn't use a mass airflow, and that's what I was set up with. So I thought I was all set. I loaded the tune into HP Tuner's editor, I checked a few things, and I thought I was ready. I bit the bullet, and I licensed the tune. Ah, I made the biggest mistake. I licensed the tune off the internet. So in order to make my tune work, I had to license the original to that ECU. So that worked, it just cost me $200 instead of $100. Okay, so now I had a computer that I could tune, 
I plugged it into the 914 and it started right up. And it was close, but it needed a lot of work in, in most areas to get it right. And that's where Kyle at Goat Rope Garage and his excellent video tutorials got me on the right track. So be sure to check that out. What's right for you and your budget? So you spend 60 bucks on an OBD Link LX and download some software, spend some time learning, delete your VATS, and you get your engine started. Or you spend 125 and you have somebody to do all that for you. Maybe you can get a computer out of the deal. Or, like me, you spend $400, you get Tuner Pro and a couple of licenses, you learn how to tune it yourself, and you amaze your friends. Just don't make the mistake I made with licensing the wrong one. And then there's the next one up, and that's $950. You buy an all-in-one package that will tune itself and allow for boost and nitrous control. That sure sounded tempting when I started on this. Or you go back to one of the earlier options that, and spend that money that you saved on a paint job or interior or maybe some track days. Well, thanks for watching Budget Outlaws, and as Kyle would say, always be tuning ABT.